Welcome back everyone to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. I am making a video today on sewing machine light bulbs and I thought about it because I'm getting ready to install a new bulb into my Singer 15-91 and I'll, I'll video, uh, make a short little video on that uh, in just a moment, but I wanted to talk about light bulbs. Uh, it's interesting in that light bulb standards or specifications for sewing machines did not change a tremendous amount during the vintage era and the vintage era you know technically goes all the way back to the first sewing machines but for our purposes we really want to talk about sewing machines that were built uh, or electrified from the 1920s up through the early 70s when we get toward what I call the last of the of the great vintage machines and you had different uh, light bulb uh, fixtures that they would put in the machines but they weren't that many different ones. There were some, and I wanted to kind of go over those here. Uh, you have basically a, a couple of variables in when you're dealing with light bulbs, okay? So if you look at these three over here, not counting the one on the far right, you'll notice that they all have a base, okay? When I talk about the base, I'm, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the, uh, the sort of the, the foundation of the bulb that goes into the socket of your light fixture. <clears throat> now they have different types of bulbs. Um, these are, the, the, the base is called a screw base. It's been around for a very long time. Many of you will recognize this. Now, uh, all of these three bulbs here, the first three that I'm pointing at, are all incandescent, okay? And those incandescent bulbs are the, basically the same technology, only in a smaller form, than the old incandescent bulbs that many of you will recognize from having used all your lives in light fixtures. And uh, it too, of course, has a, a screw base. And just, I'll put it down here just for a point of reference for you guys just to kind of give you the idea of the scale, you know, of what we're dealing with here. So um, w when you look at uh, these bulbs, the, the really cool thing is almost all bulbs from vin the vintage sewing machine era are still attainable. So if your bulb is burned out or you're missing one, you can get a new one. And you can get a new one that's essentially about the same wattage, which is very low for, the, for, these, for these incandescents. The same wattage, um, it's still an incandescent bulb and it basically functions the same. They, they have uh, some of the positives of these bulbs, of course, is that they give off a wonderful warm light, uh, sort of a yellow toned light that many of us like. Uh, I suspect because it, it resembles candlelight in many, in many ways in terms of its color and the way things look under that light. Um, and, and another advantage is they're, they're not expensive bulbs. They're fairly easy to attain if you cannot find it in a sewing vacuum center. And you may not. Uh, you can get them online and you'll probably pay more to, to have it mailed to you than for the bulb itself. You might as well order. You can even order a pack of them if you want. They're very inexpensive. Now, um, Obviously, they are smaller in both the light output and the, the sheer physical size because they're going into sewing machines. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that the screw bases have different sizes. Okay, there's a different standard. And you know this because you've bought, if you've ever had to buy <coughs> light bulbs for something like holidays, you know that they, uh, the traditional bulbs, I'm not talking about the LEDs, which we'll mention in a second, um, traditional holiday bulbs for for uh, you know, for Christmas trees and, and all kinds of festive events, would have had um, bases that were smaller, and a lot of the times you would see. Uh, many of you may be familiar with the old, um, the old holiday light bulbs that are kind of shaped like the end of this of this cotton swab, right? If you look at the cotton swab, it kind of is sort of a sort of an elongated teardrop shape, and at the base of that would have been. One of you know like a smaller screw base although some of them were, were larger and you can still see these bulbs today <clears throat> you can see them in a hardware store um, they are still sold for a lot of the same functions we've been using them for for decades uh, night lights um, uh, sometimes they are used as bulbs in the ice dispenser of older side-by-side -side refrigerators you know you you all are familiar with those and some of your machines will use them a couple of vintage machines had a spherical bulb. It was basically shaped like a ball and had a small, maybe even smaller base than this one. 
Uh, and I have seen those in Singer 99s, Singer 185s, and uh, some of those bulbs still worked, and some of them were were probably as old as the machine. They were they had frosted glass, and they had brass bases, and they were beautifully made. Now they they don't last forever, and they still get hot like these bulbs, right? They give off a lot of heat, and that's one of the downsides of these, is that over time, and we're talking about over many many years, the heat from these bulbs can degrade. Um, sometimes will degrade some of your light fixtures. Uh, it's you know just hard on them, like any lamp. You know, uh, you may have seen old lamp shades for your for your your you know your living room lamps and they kind of dry out over time because the heat from the bulbs does take its toll over many years but these are uh, still readily available if you can't again find them in a sewing vacuum center you can certainly pick them up online uh, so you have those so if you have a machine that has the old bulb right and you have one you know it, what the size is and if you're not sure what it's called you can go on the internet and you can even uh, measure, you know, I can take a tape measure, where my tape measure went, and I can measure the diameter of this base, and, and you can, or you can call the seller, and they'll help you figure out which exact one it is, right? There aren't 10,000. Uh, but the, you want to make sure you get the right one, right? Uh, and then, of course, the length matters, right? If you have a machine with a smaller light fixture, you may want the shorter version of the bulb. These two bulbs have the same base size, but notice their length is different. <clears throat> and normally, the you, you, you want the same bulb length as what your machine originally came with. If you're not sure, you can use the shorter length. Uh, if you pick the longer length and it's for a light fixture that's not really made for it, it can cause issues. It can uh, actually touch something like the, uh, this is sort of the light bulb cover here on this Singer fixture. Um, and it can damage it. It can cause damage to your machine. It can uh, uh, it can also make things really hot. And you do not want to touch this. That that you know if you ever touched a hot light bulb, you know what I'm talking about. So um, so these are just things to to remember when you let's say you find the right base. Oh, I found it. I've got they got the bulb. You need to check and see how many lengths does this come in. The seller may only have one, but you need to make sure. You can go online. You can look at different machines and see what bulb they called for. Right? How long is the light fixture? So do your own homework there so you don't end up having to do it all again. Uh, some of you will have old light bulbs that still work, but they are, uh, you know, they're, they're getting old. And by that, uh, you'll see a buildup of, um, I believe that's a buildup of tungsten on the inside of the glass as the filaments inside the bulb, you know, they, as they burn, um, you know, kind of like a candle, they burn out over time and they need to be replaced. So if you see, if you have a bulb that's working, that's great, but if you see this coloring, uh, it's either not working, it's dead, it's popped, or you, uh, you know, its days are numbered um, sooner than later. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, one thing to mention to you, and many of you may be aware of this, is that uh, they have now developed LED replacements for many sewing machine bulbs. And in fact, I bought them before. I bought, so I bought one that had um, uh, a glass, uh, a glass uh, bulb material, right? These are technically, called, we call them light bulbs. They're technically lamps in the electrical world. But uh, anyway, I found LED lights that had a glass casing. There aren't many of them out there, but the ones I found, uh, at least the ones I found, you may have found something different. They didn't have as many LED um, uh, sensors or units. I'm not even sure what they're called, but they didn't have. They didn't put off that much light, and I was a little disappointed. So uh, I had also bought this type for, with the LED. Now these are some people call them corn lights because they they look like uh, ears of corn with their little. You can see this here if I pull this up. You can see uh, all the little LEDs um, and. Uh, this one, the, the LEDs are encased in something that feels like silicone. I don't know if that's what that is, but it sure feels that way. Uh, in any case, this is um, the one I chose because I wanted more light. It was rated at being a little bit brighter. Now, if you look closely, many of you who have old singers will recognize this light bulb. This is called a bayonet style light bulb. It's not the only bayonet style. If you go online, you can go into just Google Images and search bayonet sewing machine light bulb, 
and you will find that they evolved over the years. So some of the bayonet styles looked different than the one I'm holding in my hand. Um, but the, the, the main thing they have in common is that they have little nibs, for lack of a better term, uh, on the side. And you, and you can see they're, they're sort of positioned, you know, uh, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock there, right? And the way these work is you push them into the socket and then you turn and then they lock into place, okay? And um, in the video where I install this, I'll show you guys how to do that. So, so hopefully that'll go well for you if you're not used to installing a bayonet. You know, once you know how to do it, you say, like, oh, you assume everyone does. Well, no, not really. And if you don't do it properly, you can end up uh, uh, damaging or ruining your new bulb, in which case you have to get another. So, um, something to keep in mind. Now, if you have uh, a machine that takes a bayonet style um, bulb with a, with a bayonet base like this one, um, you can still get them pretty much as they were originally made. The construction is not quite as good as the originals, but you can get them with uh, incandescent glass uh, bulbs and of course it has the bayonet base but you're not limited to that you can get the uh, the LED versions okay now uh, I'll talk about more about this this specific LED when I do the uh, install but I wanted to show you one other thing that might help explain the the bayonet base and why why how it works why it works uh, let's see get my flashlight. Oh, I need a flashlight to look at a light socket. So let's take a look. This is the inside. It will be when I move the camera for you guys. This is the inside of a bayonet or this particular bayonet style socket. And when you look down in the base there you basically see the black plastic and then you see two protruding. I'm gonna have to zoom in here for you guys. Sorry I've got two hands and uh, not enough not enough, uh, not enough to handle everything I'm trying to do here, but I want you to see the inside of this socket. And what you're looking at, I think that does show up, there are two brass protrusions there. And you know, there's, there's no thread on the inside because it's not a threaded base like the others I was showing you, but look at those brass protrusions. Well, those protrusions move. <laughs> they actually, they move uh, up and down. And so when you push the bulb in, you push in, which I'll show when I install it later. And, um, but anyway, I want you to see that, what the, what the inside of the socket looks like. A lot of people don't actually ever look at this, right? So again, remember, always have your machine unplugged. I, my machines stay unplugged through the whole restoration process, other than in the beginning, when if I'm trying to test something and, and then I unplug it, and it doesn't really get plugged in until I'm done to do my test stitching for the final uh, uh, preparation for the machine. So um, that is essentially what a bayonet uh, socket looks like. And so it looks, looks different than those that, they, that take the screw in bases. But, Anyway, I just wanted to show this to you guys and let you know you have options. Some of you, particularly if you're new to vintage sewing machines, you may have or know about brand new sewing machines that have LED lighting. Well, you can get it for your old machine. I like these LED lights because they put off more light, uh, a lot more light in, in my opinion than the old incandescents. And they, they get warm, but they don't get hot, right? I have uh, at least the ones I've had. Now you should always kind of check what you've got uh, whatever machine, excuse me, whatever bulb you have, uh, because some LEDs can, uh, you know, they're not cold, they can um, uh, go up in temperature. I've not come across any, for sewing machines anyway, that are nearly as hot as the old incandescents, and so that's one of the advantages. Kind of prolong the life of your light fixture. The other thing to mention here, I uh, mentioned early on that the color of the incandescent light is, is something a lot of people like because it's sort of a warm uh, warm, uh, not pure yellow, but it has a warm cast to it. Well, the first LED light bulbs that were created, to my knowledge, were actually not like that. They were very cold, sort of a bluish cast, like an icy blue. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that in terms of providing light, but, but it's, it's not something a lot of people, at least in my opinion, find attractive. That's very subjective. You may not care, and that's awesome. 
Well, you have an option. I actually got this particular LED light bulb is a, um, has more of a uh, yellow cast. So it mimics more the color and the quality of the light of the incandescence. It just gives you a lot more um, and without nearly the, the amount of heat emission that's going off. It's a lot more uh, you know, energy efficient. Um, not that sewing bulbs use that much electricity. But anyway, and of course, LEDs are known to have a longer, much longer lifespan than an incandescent bulb. So you have options. So if you like the glass, you can get a glass LED. You can get LED bulbs with different types of bases, everything from screw bases, different size screw bases, and uh, as well as the bayonet. And again, just to remind you, there are more than one bayonet style because it was changed over time. But uh, this is a very common bayonet style base for a light bulb. And again, always check if your machine is missing a bulb and sometimes you get an old machine that doesn't have one. Before you say, oh, it's a bayonet style, depending on how old your machine is, go ahead and do some more research online. Make sure you know which one. Again, many sellers uh, online will have that information, right? They will, they will provide you a list of machines that it should be compatible with, and hopefully they're correct. But again, do that just to save yourself time uh, before you go to purchase and install your new light bulb. And last but not least, <laughs> um, I have found, even with these wonderful new LED bulbs, which I really like, and I think you would, you would find that they put off more light, you have more light to sew with. Honestly, even, even those bulbs, I just don't find sewing machines themselves have enough light uh, I just don't find that they provide enough light for me when I'm trying to sew something and I'm not, I don't even sew full time or it's not my main, but main uh, hobby here. But uh, this is a shop light, which is not necessarily practical for sewing, but I'm showing this as an example. It's an LED light and wow, I mean, look at this, like a spotlight on a stage. You can um, get sewing lights that are specifically made for um, for sewing, you know, they mount to a sewing table and their LEDs and you, I mean, you can light it up like a, like a theater. It's just incredible. So you have those options. So don't feel you're limited to these bulbs here in your sewing machine. Uh, I don't know about the new sewing machines. Those of you who have them, maybe you like the amount of light that you get from, from the bulbs in those, but I just like having more light when I'm trying to focus on something, particularly something that would involve stitches. But there you go, guys, just a little talk about light bulbs. Um, I, I don't know if any machines have uh, if they ever used fluorescent bulbs for the, for, the, for the light fixtures that were built into the machines or not. I really don't know. But anyway, uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down there in the comments section and let me know what you think. Maybe you have you put an LED um, upgraded bulb into your sewing machine? Because many of you have <coughs> replaced your home incandescence uh, some of you replaced them originally with compact fluorescence, and now this is the same base as this old uh, 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 incandescent bulb. But this, of course, is actually an LED. Now it's shaped like a kind of like a floodlight, but they come in different shapes, right? You can get them in this this uh, classic shape, but it's an LED, right? And it still has the screw base. So it's uh, again, uh, a lot of us are switching over to LEDs. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of them just because. Um, now that you can get the, the, the more yellow toned light in them, I just think they're awesome. And um, hopefully they will last a lot longer because sadly the original incandescent invention, which was uh, miraculous back in the day <clears throat> during Edison's time, uh, you know, the quality of construction has gone downhill over the years and they just don't last and we keep having to replace them over and over and over again. So you could, it's kind of a false economy to say this is cheaper than the LED. Well, it is, but in the long term, you're just you're spending more money and and your time, which is precious. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, never thought I'd make a video about light bulbs, but there you go. If uh, if there's any other light bulb types you know of or that you're interested in, uh, like I say, share your comments below, and we will see you in the next video when I will talk about getting the new LED bayonet into the Singer 15's light fixture and getting it set up to sew. Thanks for watching, guys.